Now let me take you through a brief pathogenesis of how type 1 diabetes occurs. To be very honest, we do not know the exact steps, but over research over the last uh, 3 4 decades has shown some light as to why children suddenly develop uh, type 1 diabetes. It looks as if overnight they are developing it. What happens is that these children normally have a genetic predisposition, then they are exposed to various environmental insults. Uh, so, it could be a virus infection, sometimes it could just be autoimmunity. Now, what is autoimmunity? Normally, we have immune mechanisms in our body, we have the white blood cells, the leukocytes, and various other immune mechanisms. They are supposed to protect us from various bacteria, viruses, and other foreign bodies. But sometimes the body gets confused, and that happens when you have certain genetic makeup. So, what happens is the body thinks that the pancreas, specifically the beta cells of the pancreas is a foreign body or it is an invader and it has to go and damage it and kill it completely. So, all the immunity which is supposed to be reserved for bacteria, viruses and others uh, to get rid of them, now the body is attacked by the body's own uh, immune cells. So, once it goes and damages the pancreatic beta cells, the beta cells will start dying and then at a certain stage when all the beta cells are dead, you develop type 1 diabetes. So, that is the major mechanism by which it occurs and that is shown here in, in the next slide that uh, you have the T cells uh, and then you have the antigen presenting cells. I am not going to go too deep into this, uh, but when this is how the autoimmune mechanism uh, gets uh, triggered. So, some of the T cells are called as T helper cells, they actually help the uh, help you to get over the infection. On the other hand, there are T killer cells and these are the cells which will go and knock out your beta cells. Now, how do we know that all this is going on? And that is by looking at the antibodies in the blood. If you draw the blood and you measure the antibodies to the antigens which have attacked the pancreas, you can measure them and some of those are listed here. The GAD65 antibody, the IA2, the zinc transporter, the islet cell antibody or the ICA, the insulin auto antibody or the IAA, all these are antibodies which you can measure in the blood and if they are found to be high, you know that you have been exposed to something which is going to produce type 1 diabetes or that is the cause of type 1 diabetes. I will give you an example. Suppose somebody has had the COVID vaccination or has been exposed to COVID. You can measure the antibodies in the blood and you can say you have had COVID, you did not know about it, but your antibodies are showing up or your vaccination has been done, but your antibody never went up. So, you are still not protected. You need one more, uh, you know, injection booster dose. All this can be decided by measuring antibodies. Similarly, by measuring these antibodies, you know, first of all, it is really type 1 diabetes and you also know how it occurred. Now, there are also non-antibody mechanisms. For example, if you look at inflammatory markers, you will find that the levels of IL-1, IL-6, C-reactive protein, some of these can be increased, especially in those who have insulin resistance. And very rarely, you can also have obesity occurring in children with type 1 diabetes. A little more detail about autoimmunity and autoantibodies. As I told you, there are a series of autoantibodies which are seen in type 1 diabetes. ICA was the first one which was described, islet cell antibodies. Today, it is not being measured because very difficult to measure them. The most popular is what is called as GAD antibody. So, glutamic acid decarboxylase or GAD antibody. These are measured quite easily and they persist for a long time. So, if you find in the blood of a child who has come to you with diabetes, GAD antibodies present, it almost clinches the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. Now, of course, there are other antibodies like the IA2 and the IAA, the heat shock proteins and so on. These are not usually done. GAD antibody, you are going to do one, do GAD antibody. Otherwise, if you want to do two or three, you can do IA2 and the zinc uh, transporter uh, as well. Now, uh, very rarely this autoimmunity can occur in type 2 uh, diabetes also and this is a condition called as LADA. 
or latent autoimmune diabetes of adults. Now, this LADA occurs in uh, people who are about 30 years of age, so not in children, in uh, those about 30 years of age. Initially, it looks as if they have type 2 diabetes and they start losing weight, their C peptide goes down, they require insulin, and when we measure the blood, you will find GAD antibodies being present. So, this is a variation of type 1 diabetes which is seen in adults and we call it as LADA. Now, a uh, little more detail is uh, provided here that if you have the HLA certain types, you are more prone uh, to get uh, type uh, 1 diabetes uh, because of the uh, you know these specific antigens which, which attack the uh, beta cells. And again, a word about the GAD antibody, the GAD antibody is the most commonly directed against the GAD 65 isoform. It is a fairly easy assay now and uh, the advantage of GAD antibody is whereas islet cell antibody is present only the first month or two. If you do not get the uh, child uh, to see the child in the first one or two months, you may miss it. But GAD antibody even after 5 years or even 10 years, the GAD antibody may be still present because they persist for a uh, long time. And therefore, it is one of the most uh, uh, you know used markers for type 1 uh, diabetes. IA2 is also good, but uh, the Indian studies uh, both uh, done in uh, Delhi as well as in uh, Chennai by our group, we have found that the uh, sensitivity of the IA2 is not very good in Indians. Zinc transporter is a more modern one. We are doing it routinely at our center along with the GAD antibody test. This is a useful assay. And why it is useful is in some people who do not have GAD antibody, they will have the zinc transporter. So, if you are able to do both, it is good, but you are going to do only one, do the zinc transporter. Uh, 